morning dear children we are today going into the next part of our science lesson it's the last part so what all we did we learn in the previous classes we learned about the food chain then we learned that many food chains make a food web and there are lot of food webs in our ecosystem or in nature and then what we did we learn the first uh, level of the food chain is always a plant and the last level of the food chain will be always a carnivorous animal now i have asked you to find out a guess isn't it some of you have written and sent me and the guest which some of you have sent is here you can see and most of you have uh, guessed it correctly so what is the guess i asked you to do whether all living beings depend on plants for their food so that means the last level of the food chain is a carnivorous animal so what did i ask you does the carnivorous animal also depend on plants for their food so some of you have written the guess correctly what is a guess yes isn't it why is it so because the carnivorous animal feeds on either herbivorous or omnivorous animals which depend on plants for their food so directly or indirectly all living beings depend on plants for their food so if plants are not there in this earth what would happen we can imagine isn't it if plants are not there the whole ecosystem will be lost and we will die because we won't have food to eat we won't have oxygen to breathe so we know plants are very very essential and we also learned that plants are called as producers and all the other animals which comes from the second level all words are all called as consumers so this much i hope it is very clear for you now we will go into the next part of the lesson we have seen sometimes isn't it in our compound some rats die hmm? some leaves fall down from the tree look at this picture here look at the leaves which has fallen from the tree after many days what happens to these dry leaves have you observed today onwards you have to find out a dry leaf which has fallen down in your compound and watch for it for a few days sometimes it may take some weeks also what happens to it we know that it will decay isn't it suppose some rat has been uh, dead or it has been uh, caught by the cat and it's dead there or some animal has died and it's there in the compound what happens to that after a few days the same day we know nothing will happen if it lies down there itself for few days what will happen to that what will be our discomfort would we have some discomfort what is a discomfort which we will have that is there will be a very dirty smell isn't it and it will smell for a long time for days it will smell then after they after few days that smell will go off then few days after that when you go and see you see that the thing is not there it would have decayed and it would have mixed up with the soil same thing happens to us human beings also when we die isn't it we are buried under the soil not all uh, religions do that but a certain type of religions what do we do we bury uh, our bodies under the soil and what happened to the body after few days it will decay and it will get mixed up with the soil and it becomes manure same way the dry leaves and also the dead and decayed animals what happens it will decay and smell for a few days after that it will mix up with the uh, mud or the soil and it will become manure isn't it it will become nutrient content which is needed for the soil now how does this happen why does this decaying process happen 
Yes, look at this picture. We know decaying takes place due to certain microorganism. Isn't it? So, which are those microorganisms which help in decaying? They are bacteria and fungi. So, what do they do? When the animals or the plants, they die or they uh, dry leaves means that is dead leaf, isn't it? So, when they dry and fall into the soil, what happens? The microorganism which is in the soil will start acting over it and it helps them to decompose and break into smaller pieces and thus it helps it to mix with the soil and become nutrient. So the bacteria and the fungi which helps the dead animals and plants to decay are called as decomposers. What are they called? They are called as decomposers. Now the nutrient formed as a result of this decomposition, for it is further available for the growth of plants. And what happens? This decomposer will act on the dead animals and leaves. And then it will break and mix with the soil and become nutrient for the soil. Now, how does this nutrient in the soil help us again? Does it help us again? Yes. How? We know that the plants take in the minerals and nutrients which are present in the inside the soil, isn't it? So when we, uh, when these dead and decayed animals or food waste or whatever falls into the ground, it mixes with the, um, the microorganisms or the bacteria and the fungi will work upon it and then it will help them to decay and it will become a nutrient and that nutrient is essential for the plants to grow. So we know it is a cycle, isn't it? Now look at this illustration which is given here in the textbook. What can you see there? The producers are the first level. What do the producers do? They produce food. For whom do they produce food? For the consumers. And then after the consumers, they take the food. What happens? All the consumers and the plants, isn't it? The consumers and the producers both die. So the dead remains of that falls into the ground. The dead remains of the producers falls into the ground. And then who acts over it? The decomposers decompose it. And one, what happens? That process is called as decomposition. So on the dead remains of the consumers and the dead remains of the producers, the decomposers act over it and it decomposition takes place. And thus nutrients are formed and those nutrients are absorbed by the producers or the plants. And then it is, it becomes a cycle. So just imagine, suppose any one um, of them in this cycle does not exist. Or plants perish away. Or any of the other animal perishes away. What happened? Yes, we know there will be a breakage in this cycle. Isn't right? it? Which will affect our, affect our ecosystem. In our ecosystem, what all is important? Producers are important. Consumers are important. Decomposers are important. So if any one of this perishes away or uh, dies away or uh, becomes, uh, um, goes away from the ecosystem, what will happen? It will affect our ecosystem. It will affect this cycle. So isn't that happening nowadays? We know, isn't it? We know it is happening nowadays. Why does it happen? Because we human beings are destroying the nature. We are destroying the nature. How are we destroying the nature? Because our intervention, we are intervening into the ecosystem. What are the different ways in which the human beings are intervening into the ecosystem? We know, isn't it? Sand mining is going on. Then the forest are being cut down, afforestation, isn't it? Deforestation is taking place. Then mining is taking place, isn't it? So we know during the rainy season, the past two years, we had floods and we had um, uh, uh, different calamities which was happening. Why does all this happen? Because human beings are intervening into our 
ecosystem which is affecting our ecosystem very badly. So what should we do? We should protect our nature. Now look into page number 86. There you can see two pictures, isn't it? What is that first picture there? That is, they are leveling the hills, mountains. The other one, sand mining is going on. on. So these two activities, we know it is happening in our environment, around us, in nature, it is happening, isn't it? Now, there are few questions given there in the textbook. What are those questions? Which are the ecosystem destroyed by these activities? Which will be the ecosystem destroyed by the first one? Yes, the forest is an ecosystem we learned, isn't it? So that will be destroyed. The second one, sand mining, which will be the ecosystem? The river will be the ecosystem which is destroyed there. So, if such a thing happens, who are the, who all will lose its habitat? Write it down. Who, which are the organism which will lose their habitat? Then, which organism will, scase, uh, will face scarcity of food? So, you have to write down in these two uh, situations, which are the organism which will lose its habitat and which are the organism which will have scarcity of food and how does this affect the abiotic activities which are abiotic factors which are necessary for the growth of plants through this activity isn't it the abiotic factors also destroyed so how will it affect the growth of plants so all this you have to find out and then what are we to do we know all organism includes including producers, consumers and decomposers are interdependent. Means we, we, we learnt in that table, isn't it? With one, without one, the other cannot survive. So it is all interdependent. So it is very essential for us to preserve our nature. So keeping this picture in mind, what are we to do? Prepare a seminar. Huh? How human intervention can affect nature. What is the topic for the seminar? How human intervention can affect nature. Look at those questions which are given in the textbook and go through it. Search in the internet. Take time. Write down a seminar and send it to me. So that is the activity we have to do. Along with that, Complete those little, let us assess few questions, three questions are there in the textbook. Go through that and find out the answers for that and write and send it to me. So with this we have come into the end of the lesson. There are few questions which you have to answer. Please answer those questions. Write what are decomposers. Find out what happens to a leaf and draw this table, this illustration also in your notebook. So thank you very much children. With that we come to the end of this lesson.